Welcome back to another video. Today we're back in FreeCAD and I wanted to show you something that you might find useful when you download models off the web and you want to make a few changes to them. I'll show you how to import a step or STL file consisting of multiple parts, how we can split those parts up and how we can scale them uniformly with a rough idea of their size. Okay, so this is Fusion 360 and this is something I designed as a prototype for my Raptor 2 project a few months back. You can actually learn more about this on my channel. If you haven't watched any of my project videos, go take a look at Raptor 2. You might find it pretty interesting. So obviously this has been designed from scratch in Fusion 360. And we can see that everything in here is its own component. So we've got uh, a base here, which I can separate. And everything is unique and we can move it around individually. So the challenge here is that when you transfer from one CAD package to another, you kind of lose all this and your sketch information is all lost as well. So you're quite limited in terms of making modifications. So what I've done is I've exported this as a step file and I'll show you how you can do that really easily. In this particular case, we want to export the whole thing. So in Fusion, you can right click here and export. You can select what type. I used a step file, select your location and save it out. So that's what I did for this. I saved this whole model out as a step file. And now if we jump back into FreeCAD, I'm going to import it into here and show you kind of what we can do with it and the limitations of jumping between CAD packages. So to import a step file or an STL file, it's really simple. I've shown you before in a previous tutorial. You just come up to file, import. You wanna to go to the location where you save the step file. In this case, I'm already here, so I'm gonna hit open. So as you can see, we've imported this model in. It looks exactly the same, but we've lost a lot of our information, as I said, in regard to sketches and our dimensions. You'll see that it's imported it up here as a part. Now, if we click this drop down, you'll see all the different components that I had in Fusion 360. So if I come back, you can see we've got base, uh, 480 kV motor, a bunch of spurs, pinions, and belts. So if we come back, you can see we've also got that here now in FreeCAD. Often when you come across a 3D model online, if the person has exported it correctly, nine times out of 10, they'll provide a step file, which will enable you to have things broken down like this, which makes it a lot easier to make changes or use parts of the design in your own project. As I mentioned in my previous FreeCAD for Beginners series, it's very good practice to have each piece of the model its own part or its own component. And in Fusion 360, you will notice that I did have two components here, but I left a lot of these as bodies. So that's translated across over to FreeCAD. To keep our good practice, we can easily convert the spur here into a part by clicking on the spur, come up to create part, then we can just drag the spur onto it. And now we've got the spur inside a part as opposed to being its own individual body. And you can do that for all of them. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. Okay, so now just like Fusion 360, we've got everything here in separate components or separate parts. And just like here, they're all separate. We can separate each of them. Now in FreeCAD, if I select one of these, just like I showed you in the previous tutorials in the beginner series, we can hit space and that'll hide certain parts of the model. What you'll tend to notice as well when you import models like this is that they're no longer connected, right? So in, in Fusion 360, the motors are secured to this frame using a joint. So the motor can spin and it won't move anywhere. Whereas in FreeCAD, for example, if I go up to the left motor here and I right click transform, if I just drag one of these, I can move it anywhere I want. And the reason for that is because you lose that information such as sketches, joints, and alignment when you transfer between these CAD packages. So we'd have to recreate this inside of FreeCAD. And what I'm gonna do in a future video is show you exactly how you can do that, how you can take more complex models like this, bring all these parts together, make them, have them all connected as one model. And that kind of sets you up then to start designing your own projects where things get a little more complicated and you have multiple different parts and components just like this project. This tutorial is focused around scaling objects, so we'll focus on that here, and I'll make that video separately later on. So let's undo what we did so that our model's in the correct position. First thing we'll do here is notice our orientation of the model. So our cube in the top right, if we come to the view here right, you can see everything's kind of upside down or sideways, it's not right. We want it to be correct to our workspace, especially if you have an existing model and you're importing something into that, you want it to be correct. So we can easily fix that. And um, what we'll do is we'll come up to our master component here, which contains all our other components. We'll right click, transform, and notice you've got these uh, little arrows and balls that pop up. 
that allow you to just rotate the model or move it around. So what I'm going to do is grab this one, rotate it around nicely like this. If we click on our cube and click top, you'll know when it's at the correct orientation because you'll be able to see straight down onto it. So we're just going to hit OK. Now if we come back out, rotate it around a little bit. You can see that's improved it, but I also want to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise so that the front where the belts are is faced in the front. So we're going to go and do that again. Grab our master component, right click, transform. This time we're going to grab the green ball. We rotate that around to something like this. We can click front. We need to go a little bit more. So let's drag that one more. There we go. We can hit OK. And there we have it. Our model is now inside a free CAD with the correct orientation in regards to the origin and the coordinates of the environment. So what I'll do now is focus on the scaling and show you how you can scale this whole model as one. But this is mainly going to be useful if you're wanting to print something simple, like a model that you'd have on your desk or a figure and you wanted to add a bit of text to it or something like that. Just gives you a rough idea of the size of these things before you 3D print them. Obviously you can scale in a slicer, but that doesn't allow you to customize the model or add any text to it. So this is one of the reasons why you'd want to do this in FreeCAD. And as you can see here, once you import it in, you've got no reference to scale at all here because you lose all that sketch information. So you are limited in terms of what you can edit, but you can still use a sketch, for example, as a guide. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's click our master component. We're going to create a new part here by clicking the yellow button at the top. We're going to, we're going to rename this to guide. Then we'll switch to the part design workspace by clicking the drop down and inside of this make sure the components are active by double clicking on it so you'll see there the component just says guide if i double click it goes bold that means the components active so let's add a body in here as well by clicking this blue button and inside of there we'll create a new sketch now i'm going to sketch on the x z plane here and just hit ok so what i'm going to do here is just quickly grab the rectangle tool we're going to draw a line we're going to draw a box around our model. As we've done before in previous videos, we're going to set up some constraints so that we have a rough idea how big this box is going to be. So we'll grab our horizontal constraint, select our two points here. We're going to make that 250 mil and we're going to add a horizontal constraint as well. So we'll grab our two horizontal points at the bottom. We'll make that 500 mil. And we always want our model centered around the origin typically. So we'll create another horizontal constraint. So we'll grab our center point, one of the points on the edge, and we'll make that half of the width, which would be 250 mil again. Hit OK. And there we go. We now have this rectangle around our model. We know the width of it. We know the height of it. So now at least when we scale this model, we've got a rough idea of the size. So we'll hit close. Okay, so now in regards to scaling, you are somewhat limited in terms of what you can do, uh, what you can do after you've scaled it. So I'll show you how you can do it. So the first thing we do is select our master component here. This will select everything for you and your entire model will turn green. Then what you do is come up to the draft workbench, so make sure you're in there. And on this toolbar here with the blue icons, you can see a tool that scales the selected objects from a base point. We'll click on that. We'll click enter point. Make sure you have checked uniform scaling and create a clone. And from here, we can increase our scale factor. And we want to keep this kind of within our bounding box here. So I'm going to make this 2.9. You can see that's roughly inside. And now we know that the length of this is 500 mil and it's within our 250 mil height. So we've got a rough idea of how big this thing is. So let's hit OK. Now what that'll do is it'll create a clone for you. And you can see the clone here. So we're going to hide our guide. Now if we hide the clone as well, you can see that our model is still in here. The good thing about the clone is that if we make any changes to the original model, this will also reflect in the clone. So the downside to the clone is that notice that we've lost now all our original components for it. So if we hide the clone, We've still got our original, we've got all these individual components, we can make those changes to those and deal with them individually. Whereas with the clone, we've just got this single entity here that is a clone. Uh, we can hide the original for a sec. Now the only way to combat this as far as I know is to downgrade this part. So we've done this before in a previous video as well. So if we click on the clone, 
everything highlights green. We're in the draft workspace still. There's an arrow here that says downgrade selected objects into simpler shapes. We'll click on that. And now what that's done is it's broken this down into different solids. So you can see the individual bodies again. So we'd have to go and create parts if we wanted to remake all these things at a bigger scale. But we've got a bunch of parts and it's kind of separated it in faces as opposed to components. So if I hide the main body here and we focus on one of the motors, if we go to solid three, you can see that's the outer edge of the motor. Solid six is this cover part. And you could go through and combine these using Boolean operation to bring all those parts back together. And you can do that quite simply. I'll show you one example of it. So we'll take solid six, solid five, solid seven. We might as well do the whole thing, right? So solid eight, we've got that one. Solid nine, I believe that should be everything. That's the whole motor. Uh, the belt pinion is separate, so we'll leave that. So if we go to the part workspace, there's a tool up here on the menu, make a union of several shapes, which is a Boolean operation. We can do that. And now here on our part tree, we've got a fusion, which has brought all those back together. And inside the fusion, we've still got each of those solids. So that's one way you can bring all these parts back together. So if I bring back the original solid, you can see there we still got our model, but as I said, really limited after you've scaled it. It would be really useful if you could still edit sketches and whatnot through a step file, but unfortunately you can't. And oftentimes you've just got to work with what you've got, which is why I've shown you how to scale this way. I wouldn't recommend scaling like this for larger, more complex projects, like this example where we've got multiple parts they need to be specific sizes. But for something simple, as I said, you know, if you've got an STL file of a bottle, for example, from Thingiverse, you could pull that into FreeCAD, scale it up to whatever size you want, then add some text to it and 3D print it. And that's the typical application of something like this. But what I'll do in the next video, as I said, is I'll take the original import that we've got here. So if we get rid of this scale, so we're just gonna delete. I'll take this model, I'll show you how you can add color back to it, I'll also show you how you can make all these parts, which is something you'd make use of in your own projects. But that's it for this one. I hope it's been useful. I hope it's been a bit insightful as to the limitations of transferring between CAD packages and often why it's just better to stick with one. So that's it for this one. I hope it's been quite insightful at the challenges you face when jumping between CAD packages, but also useful in that you can take other people's models, scale them up to a size that you need and make some simple changes to it. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to quickly reach out and ask for your support. If you appreciate these videos that I put out for free on YouTube, please consider becoming a website member to support me. My biggest goal is to do this full time and keep inspiring people through teaching and sharing my own projects. You can help make this a reality by becoming a website member and I'd really appreciate it. In return for your membership, you gain access to my Fusion 360 for Beginners course, you also get access to my 3D CAD files for all of my projects. And finally, you'll gain access to the members only Discord channel where you can hang out with the other members and ask me questions. All links to these web pages I'll put in the description down below. Any support would be massively appreciated. Thank you and back to the video.